Hi friends, uh, this is my 2024 Chevrolet Trax. I'm making this video just because I feel like what's online just doesn't really represent um, the way me as an owner and why I chose this vehicle and why um, I believe this vehicle is a good value. So that's a remote start that just kicked on. Obviously beyond the good looks, I made mention before on the ceramic, just the water just sheets right off, it's just amazing. Same thing on the windows. I had the ceramic, you drive a little bit and it's just gone. And um, one of the things I like about the vehicle is on the exterior part of it is I do like this boomerang light. People can see it. It shines really brightly. The LED lights are separated. They're very bright and big and separated like the wiper that's on the back. Uh, it's a very wide stance, the back of the car. So you'll know you're not in a Civic. That over there is an Accord. Look at the difference in the width between that car and this car. I actually look at the difference in the width between this vehicle and this Ford Escape over here. It's very interesting, the difference uh, in the width. This is a wide stance, this car. It's a little bit lower. It's not as high as some cars. It is a little bit lower. It kind of gives it a sports car type of a vibe. I like to say it looks like a Blazer on the outside. It looks like a Camaro on the inside. So. Real quickly, some of the features that I have really enjoyed about this car is I like the LED lights. People can see you. This is also an LED light. This is an LED headlight. Automatic, it comes on um, under bridges when it's dark. It's on right away. Comes on at night right away. People can see me. Same thing with the turn signals that are in the back and the brake lights in the back. People can see me. You got to be seen. If you're not seeing, then they don't know what you're doing. And this car does it in spades. One of the things I like about this car. Um, the other thing I like about this car is it does have this little triangle thing there as well. It's right next to my uh, sun pass. But that thing right there uh, essentially measures the distance between itself and other cars. We'll even hit the brakes. We'll set an alert for you inside. Let's go inside the car and take a look. So I just hit the button there. As long as you have the key fob, it lets you in, which is great. By the way, I got my Chevrolet uh, car mats. When you buy a nice Chevy like this, um, they will um, give you a $50 credit for $25 attitude. I was able to get these nice uh, all-weather mats. Keep your, uh, your carpets dry on a, on a very rainy day like today. So, um, uh, just want to take a moment and uh, and uh, get the vehicle turned on and take a look at it. So I've got uh, two screens and What's nice about these big screens? I've never had the uh, Got some music blare in there. I've never had uh, two two screens before like this not of this size and not LED So one of the things I've noticed is that it's a lot easier to keep track of what you're doing here and it's a lot easier to keep track of what you're doing here and they're at the right visual line and it doesn't interfere with the field of vision that's up here. So I do wanna dive into some of the electronics um, and, and this is not a review as much as it is how I use it, which is a little bit different tone that you see from some of the car reviewers. It's different to use it ver and own it versus it is to review it, I'm learning. So I have made some modifications to the car um, and I do want to share with you now what I've done to the car that are modifications besides all weather mats which Chevrolet helped me out with. So the next way that I use my car um, is I use the remote start often. I know some people don't use a remote start and I'll be honest with you, it's something that I haven't really thought about but you can hear it when you turn it on when you're in the parking lot and you can release some of the hot air through the system. So essentially you just hit it once and then you hit that button hold down on it and now your car's off to the races and it's off and running. The front uh, LED uh, alert lights in the front will come on, um, which is really nice. And also you'll notice that the back tail lights are also on as well. So essentially what that does is it stays locked. Whatever you had going on before inside of it, air conditioning or heating, um, will do that to the car um, as the car is in remote start. Now, after a period of time, let's say you forget, the car will automatically shut off for you, no problem. 
Um, you also have the option just to kind of hit it again and it just shuts it off. And just for good measure, I'm always locking it, but you really don't need to, it remains locked. And uh, remote start is an effective way to find your car because of the noise. It's also uh, an effective way to cool off the car for just a moment so you're not getting inside of a hot car. Okay, I wanted to show you some of the keychains that I purchased online and why I did what I did. First of all, you notice that there's a difference in the RS because you can get them in different ways. Get these on Amazon, eBay, um, sites like that. This particular one has got a Chevrolet um, holder, which I like the holder. And then you notice it has a Chevrolet on the back side that's completely covered in plastic. On the other side, it's completely covered in plastic. This really does matter for when it's snowing out or it's raining out. This keeps all the water out of your key fob, protects the battery, um, just keeps it clean, and that's this particular key fob. It also has got a little mini light. So again, those things are available online as well. The second one is, I use this during the dry, uh, drier, sunnier months. Again, it's got the RS emblem that I put on there and it's got this nice little handle in red. Keep in mind that the interior is black and red, so that was kind of my thinking. Um, I did mention before it's got that little light, which is great. And this particular one does has a cover for this. I've chosen not to use it. I put it on without it. Um, I use this during dry moments and during uh, the dry season. Uh, live here in Florida, and um, when it rains, it really pours, and we get a lot of it, and it lasts for a while. Um, the back side of this is all kind of a carbon fiber design. One of the things I do want to point out about the keychains that I've chosen, and I'm sharing with you because you can get these very affordably, is I made some modifications to them. So there are weak points on each of these um, holders. And for example, the weak spot on this one is going to be right here where it connects to here. But it was fairly strong compared to all the others. So I removed what I got for the RS here, and I put the RS uh, directly on this, removing it from a weaker point. The same thing is true with this. I removed the weaker point and just put it directly on a thicker uh, keychain. Now for a while I was using black, black because I thought black was kind of neat, but the paint kept scratching off of it, so I said, I'm done with the black. I'm the, I can't have stuff wearing off, that's kind of crazy. And then the other things, I don't know if you can see this little uh, U horseshoe with the screw in it, but I have found that this is very useful on uh, both of these key fobs and being able to add additional keys and accessories to it. And um, I did add accessories to it. So I did add a handle, I did add a light, and I did add this. And here's the reason for it, is because I wanna be able to feel it in my pocket. I was going out with just this, and then I couldn't find it. it, would like disappear. Apparently, I'm getting to the point where things are disappearing. But now that I've got the handle, I got a place to hang it, and I can fill it in the pocket a little bit better. Um, and I just wanted to share with you how I'm doing my keys. Okay, so jumping ahead here, um, I've added these things. These come in a packet. I, you can get them on Amazon or on eBay. And they're called a gate, or they're called, you know, I call them rubber insets. And they go inside of all the areas of your car. To me, they look great. Uh, they're black, they're red, and the car is pretty much black and red and gr dark gray, uh, which matches kind of the features there. I got uh, armrest right here, and it's kind of got the same. You can't even tell that that's not even part of the package, and I bought that. That's an accessory. Wasn't much money. Um, um, this is a nice black uh, holder for my sunglass holder. Mention I got my sun pass right there. Uh, this particular mirror is not standard. Now, the mirror that comes with it is nice. It's smaller. If you prefer a smaller mirror, stay with it. Hey, that's me. <laughs> um, but this particular mirror has a slight curve to it. It is tinted, um, and it is larger. And, and basically, I don't know if you can see, but it allows you to kind of see your blind spots. I'm kind of purposely tilting the camera so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So what this allows me to do is allows me to see more effectively behind me as I move in my head there uh, with the mirror. And that's something that I did add. Um, another thing that I added, which I think is interesting, a lot of people have been talking about um, scratchy plastics. Like the plastics on the door are scratchy. Okay, here's what I want to say about that. First of all, 
those are not scratchy plastics. They're not going to scratch you. That is ridiculous. Um, and But the main thing that's more important than whether it's plastic or not is does it indent with your elbow? So I have indented over the last 20 years every car on the rail top there because it was not strong enough to handle it. This is not built the way other cars have been built. Not going to have that problem. This right here, there is some pad to it. Not very much, which I appreciate because you're not going to indent it with your elbow. It's very, very strong, which I like that. Um, as far as the armrest goes, a lot of people complain, well, there's no padding there. I'm going to die. It's, it's plastic. Actually, there is some indentation. Again, it's a firm indentation, which to me is an advantage um, over something like I've seen in other cars at about 50,000 miles. You begin to notice all of that uh, vinyl wrap on the doors. They do begin to have issues. It's something I think GM is very aware of, and they've made those changes. If you take a look at some of their other vehicles, they've actually addressed this. The other makers have it. That's foreign automakers. I'm I'm talk. I'm throwing shade out a little bit about this, uh, but I did buy an armrest. Um, it's mainly just for just to protect. It does feel a little better, but it honestly for you know for something like this that doesn't cost any money that matches the interior. Why not? Um, something that I bought that was additional, but not really essential. So you notice that right there, that is from WeatherTech. That is the cup phone. So the cup phone I had from the other vehicle. I also had these from the, uh, the other vehicle. These are new. I put uh, one of them around the back side of the cup and put it in here and it doesn't move. It's really solid. Um, and that's something that I've added. Now, when you put the uh, phone in there, um, it holds it nice and you can see your music um, easily and even change here so you don't wear out the buttons in your car it, with that it's just another way to go about accessing your music and seeing your music uh, I find the cup phone to be a very handy thing to have um, the other thing is that this particular car is not equipped with the automatic charge pad it doesn't have the uh, automatic um, detection it also does not have the sunroof no sunroof why not well, first of all, I had a sunroof that leaked, and it also, in my opinion, uh, that glass does heat up. It's just not something I'm interested in, so I don't have that. The other thing, as far as the, the detection light that's on the mirror, what I found with that is I found it distracting, like I'd be looking over, and I, my, I wasn't looking ahead as much as I should be. So for me, it was a distraction, so I didn't want to do that. The other thing is that with this, I have the ability to actually plug um, this particular into the foam and it charges it. So I've got the same thing as it would be with a charge, but the benefit of this is that as it's charging the foam, as soon as I stop the car and I pull the phone out right away from this, it shuts the music off immediately, which is faster than it would be on the charge port. And I also, I just feel like I have better control over it this way. It's an old school way of thinking, but I do like it better. Now, what is this thing right there? What is that? So let's take a look at this thing. It's got a blue light and it's got a red light. What in the world is this thing here? So at nighttime, these blue and red lights functions as ambient lighting down here, which I do like. This particular device is an add-on. This is from iClever. This is an air ionizer. This purifies the air that's in the cabin um, to a micronized level above and beyond uh, regular filters in the car. So essentially what an ionizer does is any dust or debris that comes through the vents it makes it heavier and they drop to the ground and you're not breathing it in i have noticed that uh, less pollen less of an issue so i have this little light that i added to it so what is this little light so this is for uh ambient lighting i've got one here and i've got one there you can see it turned on and essentially what it does is it provides a little bit of a uh of an led light and um I do like that about this particular vehicle. These are just some of the little things um, that I've added to the vehicle. I got a little hook back here. Of course, I've got my sun visor. I've got my umbrella. And those are just some of the ways that I, I use the car um, that to me um, accelerate the way that I interact with my vehicle. There's one more way that's really important. We're gonna jump to that right now. Okay, so you notice back here in the Traxxas back seat, which is a nice big back seat, is they tint from the factory all the back glass that's back there. But they don't tint 
the passenger and they don't pass the driver's windows. So that's something that I added. I added tint and I added tint, but I also added a clear tint. I also added a clear tint to the windshield. So that knocks down 70% of the heat um, that is coming into the vehicle. The advantage is you're not squinting when you're driving. The heat's a lot lower when you leave the car in a parking lot. Um, you just don't have the issue with the heat coming into the vehicle. Um, and I find that I only put on my sunglasses during those intense moments when the sunbeams are really, really piercing on those hazy refractive days. Other than that, I'm good to go. Let's talk a little bit about how I use the electronics in the car. I believe that's probably the number one thing that took me the longest to learn. But boy, there's some really great electronics and there's some great things about the electronics in this car. Uh, the first thing with the electronics I want to talk about is I want to talk about the lighting. Uh, to me, it's something that is so important in a vehicle. And you know, the LED um, daytime running lamps and the LED headlights come on automatically. It's something I want to throw a little bit of shade at some of the other manufacturers, particularly foreign makes. Their, their LED lights are not on and their headlights are not coming on automatically. Um, you know, it's a safety feature. Now, I know this is something they're not doing, and um, it's something that this car does and does in spades. Um, let's uh, let's move on a little bit and talk about the steering wheel. It does have kind of a sporty look. It's one of the things I liked about the car. It's got the flat bottom look right here. The steering wheel does a bunch of different functions, um, and how I use it uh, in particular is starting with um, the the heated steering wheel. So. Believe it or not, it does get cold with the AC in the car after a period of time, and it helps with circulation in the hand, so you're holding the steering wheel better. I'm sure in the winter months up north, that heated steering wheel is gonna come in spades. Love that. Uh, that right there, these are your cruise control operation buttons. This right here is a thing called gap adjust. So the gap adjust, you hit it, um, and it, essentially you are adjusting the distance um, from you and the car in front of you. That thing right there sends up a red indicator when you're following too close or the car's braked in front of you as a warning. Admittedly, in heavy, in heavy city traffic, you will see it go off quite a bit. And I actually prefer this. I prefer it because it's safer. It warns me. Yes, I do get a lot of alerts. I'm okay with that. See, and, it, and actually, I had a situation last week. It's one of the things that motivated me to do this video. Somebody pulled in front of me suddenly, slammed on the brakes. That thing went off and the automatic emergency braking went off in this car and hit the brakes awfully hard. Shout out to you, Chevrolet, for getting that right. Um, saved me an accident, saved me a ticket, and I uh, would like to appreciate that. So I have had this car um, for about three months. Car's only got 2,147 miles on it. And one of the things I've noticed is that my ability to keep my eyes on the road. I keep seeing people who are constantly distracted in other cars. And it's really something that um, I notice that I just don't have an issue with it because of the way that this car is set up. First of all, these screens are bright. They're clear. Um, they're in the right place. Um, it's, uh, I'm using a Google Pixel phone and a Google Android this is a Google Android uh, set up through Chevy. And I have to say, uh, shout out, they really did get this right. It looks really amazing. Um, but on this, back to this center screen here, um, you do have that following distance and the seconds is right there. Um, I do like that. Obviously this is your, your temperature gauge, your fuel gauge, uh, your mileage, your gas is right there as well. All those nice things. But let's say this is not your cup of tea. Let's say that you, hey Jim, I don't really like the way that you have that fancy. You can actually change the way that you are interacting with your car. You can change the gauge. Um, and I think that's really neat that Chevy decided to allow that. Um, I mean, there's also a very flat basic gauge. People like this one as well. There are different choices that they give you. And beyond the gauges, they have uh, basic M, uh, miles, per hour at the top, and then let's say you wanted to go to infotainment, you could have, what do I got out there now? Air supply, all out of love, digitally remastered, 
the definitive collection and then right above it you've got your uh miles per hour we'll be talking about music in just a little bit but uh jumping ahead to uh, entertainment this is one of the ways that i use the vehicle and i really like the fact that it's uh configurable and that you have the ability to make these changes i think it's really really neat i'm going to change it right now to gauge number two really liking that right now okay i want to talk a little bit about the map and i want to talk a little bit about the music one of the things that i really like about this particular car is that i mentioned before in the other screen you have the ability to see over in this screen you know the music that you've got going but what's neat is that because this map is so big it's 11 inches sharing it to get data over here you can actually change the whole thing to in this case it's sade no ordinary love um you also have the ability if you want to share the two of them together the map also sade's no ordinary love and then where you've recently been and i think that's really neat that you can do that um and then you can just keep changing it you just keep hitting this button over here and it allows you to kind of cycle through all the different things that are available to you so if you wanted to go to ways you wanted the phone you wanted to see the music you wanted to go to settings you just hit the map and you go to the maps uh, i will say that with the screen touch it's important to get it right in the center and touch it fairly firmly with chevy it's not for this is not a wimpy car by any sense stretch of the imagination uh, one of the things i do like about this particular readout is it does show me in two spaces that i've got the pixel 7 uh it shows how much battery life is going on it does show the 5g it does show battery again it does show there's some sort of an alert message there with the bell um it is showing me the time at all times, the temperature at all times. I just think that's great uh, that it's showing me all these nice things. The other thing that I want to point out is you just have the ability to pinch and zoom, really pinch and zoom nicely. You can move things over. I'm in Florida right now. I want to show you guys something. Check this out. So see how I'm going over? So you have the ability to move this. It's really helpful when you're in a new place and you're trying to find something or there's bad traffic and you're like, gosh, I wonder if it's a mess in the traffic. See how that's all red there? There's a problem there. See that red? Big time. Um, and you get the live traffic updates, which to me is very useful. So um, there is the ocean right there. Check that out. But you say, Jim, I want to jump back. You just recenter it, and the map will recenter exactly where it needs to be. It just needs a moment. Your cell phone tower goes through, and it, it sets it through. Really like that as well. So in terms of um, music, I do set this here. I have YouTube music. I'm able to kind of scroll through my playlist with my phone here, have the map up at full size, and I can either see the songs here or I can see them here, or I can do what I'm doing now where I have that full size, that full size, and then I see the songs here, which is kind of the way I usually prefer to do it. And then in terms of volume um, and changing songs, you can change songs on your phone. You can change songs to the buttons on the, I can see the buttons on the back there, but there's volume um, on one, there's uh, changing changing stations on the other, which is amazing. That's really great ways to hear music. Um, another thing um, about this particular uh, setup is, let's say for example, you would like to see um, Sirius, Hits, Sirius XM hits. So there's Sirius XM. So you've got Sirius XM. And now you've got music coming in this way. Let's say you don't want to listen to Miley Cyrus. She's not your favorite. Some people like her. Um, but let's say you want to listen to Fox Business. Boom, there it is. And you have the ability to not only have the Fox Business going, but by clicking this, you also have the ability with the Android Auto to be back to your map and you're listening to Fox Business. Then if you want to switch back over right away to Sade, you just hit it again. And it gives you this ability to really interact with your entertainment in a fast way that's safe and that very much allows you to uh, enjoy that. But when it's time to cut out of here and you've got your phone in the cradle here, like I showed you earlier, and you've got it with this right here, as soon as you unplug it, the music gets instantly off. Love that feature. Um, I do like the fact that like for parking tickets here, uh, tickets for, you know, you're going through the parking garage, you got an envelope, that's really great. 
Um, you got your OnStar right there. Mine works great. No issues whatsoever. Um, but just in terms of how I'm using the vehicle is kind of what I've been discussing. I want to jump into something else. So I want to talk a little bit about this cup holder and something that I've noticed. If you notice, it's not just a cup holder, but there's a notch here and there's a notch there. What in the world could those notches be good for? Well, I've discovered that not only is it great to hold the wallet at times, um, I love that, but it's also a great way to put the smart key in there. And now the smart key has a holder and it's not flopping all around. I really do like that. I, I found that I have been finding that if that notch is more useful than it's not useful. And uh, it's a neat little feature. Um, glove box, I got all my junk down in there. Lots of good junk in there. Um, I do want to jump to the back and show you a little bit about how I use the back of the vehicle. So let's get out of the vehicle for a minute and go take a look. Okay, so in using the vehicle, one of the things that I really appreciate is the way that this operates. As long as you have a key on you, it will open. It is a uh, capless system. Really like that. Just press it, press it one more time and you're good to go. Uh, like the windshield wiper, uh, like this setup. Um, one of the ways that I use it is, first of all, it's not electric. But it doesn't really matter because it's so low that the way that this is designed is it just opens right up. I don't know if you can see on my plate there, but I've got a rubber around the outside of it. The benefit of that is that it allows no slamming noise from the plate. So, so it didn't take a lot of effort to open it. Look, it's almost doing it automatically. So why do you need electric? So back here in the way that I use this is... It is pretty wide from here to here. Boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it amazes me how much space. But down in here, when you want to put something down in there, there's whole, enough for a whole bag of groceries down there. They have a little organizer going on right here, which I like. Um, and essentially, uh, on this back area back here, this is how I'm kind of running my daily operations. And uh, I wanted to share with you some of the products I'm using for the car, which has made my life a lot easier. So when the wheels get out of control, I spray it with a turtle wax tire um, cleaner, wheel and tire cleaner. Cheap at Walmart, cheap wherever you want. Rain-X Ceramics, great product, love that. Um, this is the um, Optical Select High Gloss Spray Sealant. I use this on the paint. I swear by it, it's by the chemical guys, I love it. And then I love this stuff too. This is the, um, the GX3 Plastic Restore. Spray that on the vehicle love that too then on the tires i use the uh, graphene black magic on the tires these are all products that i use and um, i'm always using the microfiber because it keeps the vehicle clean and um, that's pretty much the way that the back's being used let's go ahead and close this but i just want to show you this is not a big deal there's a handle right here you just take it and i just kind of flick it gently and then you're good to go and uh you know i just wanted to take today and just kind of spend some time with you in my 2024 traction, how I use the vehicle and why I use the vehicle. I guess the last thing I'm just gonna say about it is that this is a purchase that I do not regret making. I think this is the best value in America today. And I believe that for $25,000 to be at a trim level with these kind of nice features um, is pretty amazing, including these beautiful 19 inch wheels, bigger size tire, um, in my opinion, this has confused the reviewers and confused the competition. This is no, this is known as something as value. So value is something that uh, means that you're getting a lot for your money and you're getting things that matter. You're saying, yeah, but it's not a master of anything. I don't need this thing to go from zero to 60 in one second. I need this to go to zero to 60 in a normal amount of time not robbing every dollar out of my pocket and doing it in a way that I enjoy, which is what this car does. This is value. And uh, in my opinion, this is the way to go. Again, I'm Jim. This is the 2024 Trex, the best value in America. The long life, now we feeling it again, better